Assembly instructions, camel. Tools included, a screwdriver, Phillips and slotted, two and one, double open end wrench, 13 and 15 millimeter, two Allen wrenches, five millimeter and six millimeter. Tools needed, scissor and bike pump. Step one, unpack the e-bike. Pull the frame and all parts, charger, seat, tool kit, keys, fuse, nut caps, manual and pedals out of the card box. Separate bike from the foam padding. Cut off all zip ties with the scissors while being extra careful as not to damage the paint or cut any wires or cables. Ensure all the following pieces are included with the Nacto Camel. Now stand the bike upright. Place some foam padding under the front fork if placed on the ground or put it on a bike assembly repair stand if you have one. We want to keep your bike looking new. Step 2. Assemble the front wheel. First, loosen axle nuts on the front wheel to make room for the front fork. Now, remove the brake cable from the linkage of the left arm while squeezing the brake arms to make room for the front wheel. Lift the front of the e-bike and lower the fork onto the wheel axle. Line up the axle lock washers with the hole at each fork. Note, these two special fork lock washers keep the wheel from falling off if the axle nuts ever loosen up. Tighten the axle nuts by hand. Once the lock washers are in place, tighten both axle nuts with the supplied double open end wrench. Note, before doing the final tightening of the axle nuts, make sure the wheel is square and true with the forks. Push the black plastic caps onto the nuts. Put the brake cable back to the linkage of the left arm while squeezing the brake arms. Step 3. Install the handlebar. First, insert the handlebar stem into the neck of the frame. Set at the desired height. Align with the front fork. Tighten the bolt on the top of the handlebar stem with the supplied Allen wrench. Now perform a twist test. Brace the front wheel between your legs. Switch hands so the opposite hands are pushing and pulling with about 20 pounds of force to make sure the handlebar and front wheel are still properly aligned. Repeat the twist test, pulling, pushing with the opposite hands. Step 4. Install the front fender and headlight. Remove the fender and headlight mounting bolt from the fork arch with the supplied screwdriver and set aside. Place the fender in position from the back of the front tire past the front fender mounting point under the fork arch. Attach the headlight and fender to the fork arch. Pass the bolt through the headlight mount, fender mounting point and fork arch mounting point. Note, the fender bracket should go in between the arch bracket and the headlight bracket. Thread the lock nut at the bolt end and tighten with the supplied screwdriver. Attach the fender mounting arms to the front fork. Ensure the fender is centered and tighten both the mounting bolts. Center the headlight and adjust the angle slightly downwards to illuminate the road ahead and not blind oncoming traffic. Use the supplied Phillips head screwdriver to loosen the headlight angle adjustment bolt. Tilt the headlight to the optimal position and then tighten in place securely. Step 5. Adjust the front brake system. Notice the adjustment of the front brake system is not easy. The following steps are only a general guide. If you are not sure you have the experience, skills, and tools to correctly perform all steps, consult a certified, reputable bike mechanic to assist with it. Pad adjustment. Loosen the pad mount. Bring the arm and pad to the rim and adjust. Locate the pad to the top edge of the braking surface. Note, do not locate the pad to the top edge of the rim. It would hit the tire. Bring the pad gently to the rim and push with some mild force and secure the nut. The pad will tend to be self-aligning and put the convex concave washers where it needs to be correctly aligned with two flat surfaces, the rim and the pad aligned. Hold the pad as you tighten the final tightness. Repeat the process on the other side. Cable Attachment Before we draw the pads together, back out the barrel adjusters three or four turns. 
so that we can have some fine tuning at the lever. Loosen the pinch bolt. Pull the arms together with your hand and pull the cable out with some mild force. It is only necessary to get the rim close. Then secure the pinch bolt. It should flatten and crush the cable. Set the pad clearance. Bring the barrel adjuster in toward the lever, giving more slack. Typically, the pads should feel like they are contacting the rotor at a minimum of half the lever travel. Centering. Centering is done by subtle changes in spring tension. There are screws to the return spring on both sides. By tightening the screw, you are increasing tension on whatever side you tighten. The end goal here is to keep even pad clearance on either side of the rim. Take the right pad, for example. We can tighten to make it far from the rim or loosen the screw to make it close. Step six, install the seat. First, open the quick release lever by hinging it open fully. Insert the post into the seat tube. Adjust the seat post up or down to a comfortable height, while ensuring the seat post is inserted into the frame past the minimum insertion point. Close the quick release lever to secure the seat post and check that it cannot move. If needed, use the thumb nut to add tension to the clamp so there is some resistance when the lever is in line with the clamp bolt. Step 7. Install the pedals. Locate the pedal with an R stamped into the end of the pedal axle, which indicate it is the right pedal. The right pedal goes on the crank on the right side of the bike. The remaining pedal, with an L stamped into the end of the axle, is the left pedal. The left pedal goes on the crank on the left side of the bike. The right pedal is threaded to tighten by turning clockwise. The left pedal is reverse threaded and tightens counterclockwise. Carefully thread the pedal onto the crank by hand slowly. Further, tighten with the supplied double open end wrench. Do not cross thread or damage the threads. Step 8. Install the basket. Remove the bolts of the basket on top of the front fork mounts with the supplied screwdriver. Pass the bolt through the fork mounting point and the bracket 1 mounting point. Tighten with the supplied screwdriver. Fix the basket to the mount extending from the stem of the handlebar. Pass the bolt through the bracket 2 mounting point. The basket mounting point and the mount extending from the stem of the handlebar. Thread the lock nut onto the bolt end and tighten with the supplied screwdriver. Fix the basket to the bracket 1. Fit the bottom bracket into the curve of bracket 4. Pass the bolt through bracket 3 mounting point, the basket bottom mounting point, and bracket 4 mounting point. Tighten with the supplied screwdriver. Snap the cover into place. Step 9. Inflate the tires. Check that the tire beads and tires are evenly seated around the rims. Use a pump with a Schrader valve and pressure gauge to inflate each tire to the recommended pressure indicated on the tire sidewall. Do not overinflate or underinflate tires. Step 10. Charge the battery. Operate the electrical system when the battery has been adequately charged and the battery is secured to the frame mount. Your Nacto bike comes partially charged. We recommend you connect the charger input plug, 110 to 20 volt plug, to the power outlet for three to four hours. The charger light will go from red to green when it is fully charged. Step 11, register warranty card with us ASAP. Note, keep proof of purchase in a safe place. Keep packing and box for at least two weeks from the date of purchase, as we do not provide a box for returns if needed.